Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be talking about limiting reactants. So we already defined what limiting reactants were, and we used uh, very simple examples, like where instead of a balanced equation, you have like um, a recipe for how to make, I don't know, a BLT or something like that. And then the whole point is, can you, if you're given amounts of things, figure out how many BLT sandwiches you can make? Well, even though that's practical, uh, the way that we use that in chemistry is by starting with uh, a balanced equation and having different reactants, and then which reactant are you going to run out of first? And the way you figure that out is by using the bridge method, which there's another video on, right? And so in case you forgot the steps, these are the steps to the bridge method. The only difference is that once you've converted everything, Okay, in order to figure out which one of these is your limiting reactant, you're going to need to divide each by the number of moles according to your balanced equation. Okay, Whichever one is smaller is your limiting reactant. Anything else, that would be your excess reactants. Okay? But the bridge method is the key. So here's an example. Let's say I have 18.1 grams of NH3 and I have 90.4 grams of CuO. So I have ammonia here and then I have copper 2 oxide. I want to know which one of these I'm going to run out of, and then how much N2 gas am I going to be making? So how do we do that? Well, we convert these uh, two guys from grams to moles first. Uh, I always like to write my uh, given amounts over the actual chemicals in the chemical equation, and I also like to mark my unknown. Notice this is grams to grams, so definitely I'm going to have to use the bridge method. The only difference is I never am given two amounts, right? But that means one of these I'm going to run out of and one of them I'm going to have too much of. So let's follow the steps on the previous slide to figure out which one of these I'm going to run out of. All right, so let's convert. 18.1 grams of NH3. I divide by the molar mass, cancel, and I get 1.06 moles. 90.4 grams of CuO. What's the molar mass of CuO? 79.5 moles, uh, grams cancel, and I'm left with 1.14 moles, right? Now, here's the next part, which gets a little weird. I now look at whatever coefficient is in front of my balanced equation, and I divide these by those numbers. So this gets divided by 2, because there's a 2 in front. I get 0.53. This gets divided by 3, so 1.14 divided by 3 to get this. And now I have my limiting reagent or limiting reactant, whichever one is smaller. Now notice, right, that I started with more grams of this, but it ended up being my limiting reactant. This is why we do these types of calculations. Because if I'd said, hey, get 18.1 grams of this and 90.4 grams of this, and you know, I want to know how much nitrogen you're going to make, almost anybody would say, oh, well, of course you're going to run out of this first because there's less of it. The only problem is, remember, we have to convert these from grams to moles because a mole of this stuff is very different than a mole of this stuff. Okay, so that's how we find the limiting reactant. Now, that means I use this number. I can erase and ignore that number. So now I'm just going to build my bridge. I'm going to go from grams to moles, use my mole ratio, and then from moles back to grams. Let's do that. And remember, it's three steps. So I have 90.4 grams of CuO. I already did the first step, right? Right here, molar mass. What is my mole ratio? Looks like it's a 1 to 3. And then I need to know the molar mass of N2. That would be 14 times 2, which is 28. So just like before, okay, I have my first step, divide by molar mass, second step, mole ratio, third step, multiply by molar mass. And everything cancels except for the grams of N2, which is what I want. So in your calculator, do 90.4 divided by 79.5 divided by 3 times 28. That'll give you about 10.6 grams of N2. And let's say you picked the wrong one. What if instead you picked ammonia as your limiting reactant? Well, if you did that, you would get a number that's bigger than this, and that would be incorrect. That's why you have to figure out your limiting reactant or reagent first. And I can plug that in then, 10.6. Let's do a different example. I have 2.65 grams of iron. I'm reacting it with a solution containing 18.51 grams of nickel 2 nitrate, which is my limiting reactant, and how much nickel do I make? All right, let's plug in what we know. 2.65 grams of this, 18.51 grams of that. And what am I asking for? I'm asking for how much nickel is formed. Uh, I actually don't know why this has an X over here. I really don't need to know how much of this is formed, but let's just, 
again, focus on how much nickel is being made. So which one of these am I going to run out of? Let's figure it out. 2.65 grams of iron. What's the molar mass of iron on the periodic table? It's 55.85. Again, everything cancels. 0 0.047 moles of iron. Next up, 18.51 grams of nickel 2 nitrate. What's the molar mass of nickel 2 nitrate? 182.7. Again, that gives me about 0 0.101 moles of this stuff. Now I have to use my balanced equation. I divide this by 2. I divide that by 3. When I divide that by 2, I get this. When I divide that by 3, I get this. So it just so happens that it looks like my limiting reagent or reactant is iron. And it makes sense, you know, to some degree because I have less of this, but look how much less I have. And look how close these amounts are. So again, you can't just look at like whatever number these things have and say, oh, okay, well, this one's so much less that it's going to have to be this. We we're still pretty darn close. And so we're lucky that we actually did have something that matched. But iron is going to be my limiting reagent. Okay. So let's take a look at how much nickel is being formed. I can get rid of that. I just want to look at this. All right, so 2.65 grams of iron. I want to use my first step, so that's divide by molar mass. Do my uh, nice balanced equations mole ratio, so that's a 3 to 2. Right here, there's the 3, there's the 2. And then what's the molar mass of nickel? It looks like it's 58.7. So everything cancels, and I'm left with 4.18 grams of nickel. Okay. And if I wanted to, I could also figure out how much iron 3-nitrate there is. And in fact, you know what? I will show you that. Just feel free to try to do this on your own because it's the same exact process. Just make sure you use this amount of iron. We can't use this amount of nickel nitrate because, well, it's, it would give us excess. So let's see. So I guess I'll plug that in, 4.18. Let's do the rest. So notice the first step's the same. Mole ratio is different. It's a 2 to 2. And then I have my crazy high molar mass because this is iron 3 nitrate and so it's a huge number. And then that would mean I would make 11.5 grams of this iron 3 nitrate. All right. That's how you find limiting reactants of you know any chemical that you could be given inside of a chemical equation. And also how you can figure out what the amounts would be that you'd be making if you were doing this for real in a lab. All right. Hopefully you found that 